So thank you very much. I'm honored to speak to everyone today. And so far we've been discussing small arms diversion and cars tracing work. As we know, the key features used to identify a firearm are the serial numbers and other markings such as factory markings, um, import marks, and they're often obliterated. Over the next few minutes, I hope to highlight some ongoing research in collaboration with Cranfield University into the non-destructive recovery of these marks. As I mentioned, serial numbers are often removed um, to undermine traceability. Not strictly a conflict zone issue, however, this is obviously the focus um, of the ITI. While only 5% of our database shows obliterated markings, the prevalence in specific regions of operations is much higher um, in certain countries. In all disciplines of forensic science and by extension weapon tracing, we aim to maintain the integrity of evidence. The standard accepted method of serial number recovery in forensics is to use what's called Fry's reagent. It's a mixture of copper chloride, ethanol, and hydrochloric acid. When we use these chemicals, we strip layers of the metal to expose underlying microstructure, and we directly alter the state of the firearm from its original seized state. The rusting and corrosion left behind is completely unavoidable, and it's undesirable in both forensic practices and tracing. As Haley mentioned, presence of a serial number allows our tracing unit to contact the respective country of manufacture in an attempt to piece together the diversion route. This will help inform policymakers to potentially increase PSSM and security processes, hence the importance in recovering the obliterated markings. In the case of the pictured barrel on the screen, the serial number has been removed, but the caliber and proof marks are left intact. We see this quite often in our work um, and in local gun and gang crime as well. The identifying marks such as serial numbers and manufacturers removed to conceal the identity, but the caliber and proof marks remain to prove it's a legitimate weapon and therefore ends up being worth more money than an artisanal piece. This shows the effect of to the material when dot painting serial numbers onto a metal firearm. Dot painting is a common technique used to apply serial numbers as seen in the top photo. The stylus comes down and strikes the material and causes the underlying structure to become more dense as the crystalline structure compresses. When people obliterate the serial numbers, it's often the case that they only remove the visible surface. This leaves the compressed structure behind. The red line in the diagram shows the material that they typically remove with a tool they're using often a chisel or a power tool like a grinder or a Dremel. There are other methods of mark application such as stamping, etching, and laser engraving, which I'll touch on a bit later in the presentation. What's the solution to all these obliterations and the issues caused by Fry's reagent? This is an eddy current recovery kit. It's quite novel. Um, it's been developed by Regula Forensics in Latvia. And it was originally developed for use on VIN numbers in vehicular investigations and has been adapted for firearms examination. As part of my PhD work with Cranfield University, I'm testing the kit against all types of firearms and obliterations. We know that Fry's reagent does not work on aluminum weapons. However, this kit has proven effective on serial number insert plates, which are often made of aluminum. And I have an example of that later as well. The components of this kit include a magnetic base and accessory magnets. This allows for magnetic field to run through the weapon and most importantly, carry the eddy current pulse to the magnetic tape, which is lined in the bottom corner of the photograph. Um, we also have the eddy current supply controller and scanner. In this case, we're using a steel scanner. Um, it's a dynamic scanner. Um, we also have other scanners for aluminum, um, which we don't have a current capability to use um, with Fry's reagent. The box there is a tape reader and it reads the magnetic tape so that it can send the data from the tape through to the computer software. The data can then be held in the magnetic tape and transported. So this is ideal for mobile use. Um, we can analyze the results at a later time. How does it work? And um, that's, it's a very simple process. Um, here we have a serial number that has been obliterated by a grinder. And underneath, when we look at the microstructure, we can see a dot peened letter H. The first step is to magnetize the weapon as such. 
Um, we do this with a combination of the accessory magnets and the base. Once it's magnetized, we'll lay the magnetic tape on the top of the firearm over the obliteration. The appropriate scanner and strength of eddy current is selected. For longer marks, like a serial number, we use the dynamic scanner and physically drag it over the surface. We also have a static scanner, which we would use in a tight area um, or for a small mark, um, like an import stamp or manufacturing mark. When the pulse travels through the material, as such, um, the pulse travels through the material and wherever there's an area of localized tension, that's where the eddy current pulse will butt up against the material and that signal will transfer to the magnetic tape on the surface. The tape is then captured by the reader and the software interprets that data. The tapes, as I said, they're reusable and they hold data until they're reset. This means we don't have to read them immediately, um, as mentioned, and this allows our field teams to use the kit in potentially hostile environments. And we can take those tapes away and resolve and analyze them at a later time in a safer location. If we compare the results of the standard recovery technique using Fry's reagent to the eddy current recovery, there are some obvious difference. Um, in Fry's reagent, you can often see the individual dot peen marks because we're physically removing the top layer of material. Um, depending on the type of weapon and the material it's made out of, you can get it to be very clear in, in photographs, which is great for um, forensic purposes in, in courts. However, it comes at a massive detriment because we're polishing the surface to a mirrored finish. This destroys the integrity of the evidence and not alone um, with polishing, but the surface will rust and corrode over time because of that chemical exposure. The eddy current in comparison, the dots, um, you can connect them by the software. Um, we can also turn off this feature. And we end up sometimes with a less defined image. However, it is still very readable and the huge benefit is that the surface is completely unaltered. We've preserved our evidential integrity, um, which can be critical in some cases. I have a few examples to show you now to really showcase how well the system works and various applications. So first, this is a muzzle device um, from a rifle at the Defense Academy Armory. Besides the letter E that you can see um, in the left hand photo, we had absolutely no idea what the serial number was um, as it was removed from every external component of the weapon. It had not been taken apart um, at this stage and we did recover this obliteration quite easily. Um, and then we pulled the weapon apart, which we hadn't done um, and found a single unobliterated hiding serial number on an internal component. So whoever did all of these obliterations had removed all of the external and internal um, 202, but they missed one. And what this shows is that the muzzle device was in fact original to the rifle and was not an aftermarket addition. A second example we have, um, this is a pistol with a steel, or sorry, an aluminum insert plate. The background on this pistol is that it had been illegally deactivated, illegally reactivated, sorry, and then confiscated and deactivated, and then again stolen and reactivated, and then eventually confiscated again by the police. So it's had quite a life to it. Eventually, in one of those um, reactivation stages, the serial number was removed. This is also the same pistol from the barrel um, in the first slide. So we can see the inserts um, are often accompanied in a polymer framed weapon, um, pistols especially. This one happens to be aluminum and the kit works on both steel and aluminum. So we can see that the aluminum plate has been scraped away. Um, we can see some evidence of that in the polymer as well. Usually we wouldn't be able to recover this because Fry's reagent is ineffective, um, but it was very basic using this technique. Um, and we, can, we have a clear photo of the serial number, um, which is fantastic um, in both forensics and taking into consideration the tracing of this weapon um, through the, the court system. The benefits to the eddy current recovery, as I kind of alluded to, it's non-destructive. With Fry's reagent, you only have one chance to get it right, and then you've destroyed your piece of evidence. Using this system, you can scan and rescan using the entire gamut of settings and exhaust all options to determine if the serial number is recovery. 
we can use it as a diagnostic test as well, because if this system doesn't work, chances are Fry's reagent also won't recover anything because there's no internal tensions in the metal. Um, car field teams especially, this is a huge benefit too, because we can't fly with these chemicals. Um, we can't transport them into the conflict zones that we work in and often can't purchase them locally. This leaves us with a massive capability gap so this system provides a comprehensive solution to the problem. The limitations to the eddy current recovery, um, similar to Fry's reagent, because it works on the internal tensions of an obliteration, it only works if the tensions exist. When a mark is engraved with a laser or lightly struck stamp, those tensions are very shallow and the removed area will often be deeper than those tensions. This, uh, the middle photo there um, is a bical pistol with a laser engraved uh, serial number. Obviously it's very clear on the surface. However, the scan is very, very faint. It shows that the tensions in the material left by the laser are minimal and highly likely to penetrate deeper than what would typically be removed by a criminal or um, a conflict group. It's not necessarily detrimental to the kit because um, Fry's reagent works on the same principle. While this is still a part of ongoing academic work, CAR will be deploying with this kit into some of our regions of operation. We're also working with local law enforcement agencies and local armories to recover serial numbers from their collections with valuable results being obtained. Eventually, we would like to move this kit to an ISO level to work in forensic science laboratories. However, we are very pleased with the results thus far. <laughs>